Hi everyone. Today, we invite you to take a closer look at one of the most iconic ships ever launched by the Spanish Navy, the San Juan Nepomuceno. Built at the Royal Shipyard of Guarnizo and launched in 1766, this vessel represented the strength, pride, and maritime ambition of the Spanish Empire. She was a 74 gun ship of the line, the true workhorse of every great fleet of the 18th century, offering the perfect balance of firepower, speed, and seaworthiness. What may surprise you is just how long she served. Nearly 70 years at sea, surviving multiple eras, monarchs, and wars. But it wasn't her size, or even her guns, that carved her name into naval legend. It was her unyielding spirit. Her most defining, most tragic, and most heroic day came on October 21, 1805, the day we remember as the Battle of Trafalgar. On that day, the San Juan Nepomuceno faced not just the British fleet, but the cruel mathematics of war itself. Positioned at the rear of the Franco-Spanish line, she suddenly found herself alone, and under the full force of six British ships attacking at once. Imagine that scene, broadsides from every direction, cannon smoke choking the air, iron shot tearing through the wooden hull. And yet, despite the chaos, her flag never fell. Commanding the ship was Commodore Coe's Madam Yanchiruka, one of the most respected officers in the Spanish Navy, a brilliant cartographer, a mathematician, and above all, a man of duty. Even after being struck in the leg and bleeding heavily, Chiruka refused to leave the deck. His order was simple, unshakable. Stand and fight to the last. And the ship obeyed. While many around her surrendered, San Juan Nepomuceno became a lone burning fortress of resistance in the midst of the British triumph. Only after Chiruka fell, dying a hero's death, did his senior officer fulfill his final instruction, that no more lives be wasted in a helpless fight. The ship surrendered, but her honor remained unbroken. So profound was the courage of her crew that the British preserved her name. As a prize of war, and later as HMS San Juan, she continued to serve the Royal Navy for decades. The name San Juan Nepomuceno stands as a symbol of indomitable spirit in the face of impossible odds. Her design had deep roots. Based on the proven plans of British naval architect Thomas Slade, the same mind behind legendary ships like HMS Victory, the project was carefully adapted by Spanish master ship builder Cristobal de Urubia. And she was built not in Spain, but in Havana, Cuba, where access to dense, durable tropical hardwoods gave Spanish ships a reputation for extraordinary strength and longevity. Let's look at the essential features that define this warship. The San Juan Nepomuceno displaced around 1,700 tons. Her gun deck length measured roughly 51 meters, giving her both presence and stability in the line of battle. A crew of 530 to 550 men, including sailors, gunners, and marines, lived, trained, and fought aboard her, turning the ship into a floating military ecosystem. Her armament followed the classic and highly effective 74-gun layout. On the lower gun deck, the main battery. 28 powerful 24-pounder cannons, capable of smashing through enemy hulls at long range. On the upper deck. 30 lighter 18-pounders, ideal for sustained broadside exchanges. And on the forecastle and quarter deck. 16 to 18 guns of 8 and 4 pound caliber, used for maneuvering fire, chasing, and close quarters action. This configuration was the secret behind the 74's dominance. It delivered a near perfect balance. Firepower comparable to a 100 gun Leviathan, the speed to pursue or evade, and the seaworthiness to cross entire oceans. She did not stand alone in her class. 
Her sister ships were San Pasqual, San Francisco de Assis, San Lorenzo, Santo Domingo, and San Agustin, forming a powerful family of 74 gun warships that strengthened the Spanish battle line. In this episode, let's put aside dry numbers and look at the San Juan Nepomuceno through the eyes of a ship modeler. Because her design is not just a technical plan, it is a book written in the curves of her hull and the details of her ornamentation. And to capture her spirit on a model, you must read a few key chapters. Chapter 1, The Spanish Character in the Hull. Spanish warships, especially those built in Havana, were famous for their exceptional strength and longevity. The reason was simple, they were crafted from the finest tropical hardwoods, Cuban cedar, mahogany, and ironwood. For the modeler, this translates into one important visual cue. The hull must look powerful, rounded, and heavy with substance. Compared to the slimmer British ships, the San Juan Nepomus Erno was more robust, almost barrel-chested. How to capture it? Look for that compact, muscular contour. The decks should not appear overly stretched. The stern must be full and broad. This is the foundation of her identity. Chapter 2, The Stern, The Ship's Face and the Builder's Signature. Spanish ships of the late 18th century had a distinctive stern architecture, high, towering, multi-tiered, and richly decorated. It wasn't just a structural end. It was a statement of imperial power and Catholic devotion. For the modeler, key details include Wide galleries with carved railings, often on two or three levels Tall arched windows of the captain's and admiral's cabins, framed with gilded ornament And the centerpiece A full-figure sculpture of Saint John of Napamook, standing in a central niche, surrounded by angels or allegorical figures this one element sets the San Juan Nepomuceno apart from every other 74-gun ship. While the British were already simplifying stern decorations, the Spanish held firmly to Baroque grandeur. The stern of the San Juan Nepomuceno is nothing less than a floating triumphal arch. Chapter 3, The Figurehead, A Name Made Visible. Unlike many ships of the era, she did not carry a mythical creature on her bow. Her figurehead depicted Saint John of Napamook himself, carved in full detail, wearing clerical robes, a deeply symbolic touch, reflecting both her name and her spiritual heritage. How to capture it? Make this figure delicate, expressive, and unmistakably human. It is a focal point of the entire model. Chapter 4, The Color Scheme, Nobility and Discipline. The San Juan Nepomuceno followed the classic Spanish color pattern of the Napoleonic era. A black or very dark brown hull, crossed by broad yellow ochre stripes along the gun ports. Inside the ports, a deep blood red tone was often used, practical in battle, psychological in intent. How to capture it? Use sharp, clean contrasts. The dark heavy hull paired with bright yellow bands is one of the most beautiful and recognizable aesthetics in all age of sail warship design. Chapter 5, Rigging and Sail Plan, Scale and Realism. As a typical 74-gun ship, the San Juan Nepomuceno carried three masts, fully rigged with complex standing and running rigging. The sail plan was extensive and visually dramatic. For the modeler, proportions matter. The masts should not be too thin, these structures carried immense loads. Bring life into the sails. Slight curvature, gentle fullness, and natural fabric tension instantly transform a static model into a living scene. The final lesson for the modeler. To make your model of the San Juan Nepomuceno truly recognizable and alive, emphasize three defining elements. A powerful, rounded, muscular hull. An ornate, towering stern with the sculpture of Saint John of Napamook. A bold black and yellow color scheme that commands attention. 
This was not a faceless iron soldier. It was a floating fortress with a name, a face, and an unbreakable character, and capturing that personality is the highest form of the modeler's art. Now let's examine the service history of this illustrious ship. In 1793, she took part in the Anglo-Spanish occupation of Toulon. Four years later, in 1797, she fought as part of the Spanish fleet in the Battle of Cape St. Vincent. But her defining moment came at the Battle of Trafalgar. On October 21, 1805, though dismasted by the guns of Nelson's fleet, the San Juan de Pomoceno became a legendary symbol of Spanish heroism under the command of Commodore Don Cosme de Mianda Churuca. She was one of the last ships fighting after most others had surrendered. Commodore Churuca, in a defiant act, had ordered the Spanish flag nailed to the highest stump of a mast, a clear signal that there would be no easy surrender. For hours, even after a cannonball tore off his leg. Mortally wounded, the Basque-born Churuca forbade his officers to surrender and ordered them to keep returning fire as long as he lived. His officers kept their word even after Churuca's death, passing command of the ship to the second-in-command, Francisco de Moina, who continued the fight until he, too, was killed. He was replaced by the next officer in the chain of command, who also refused to surrender. However, unable to break through the ring of fire formed by six enemy ships, including Defiance, Tonnant, and Dreadnought, and wishing to prevent the ship from sinking with all the wounded trapped below, the last surviving officer aboard the San Juan Nepomuceno finally surrendered, leaving more than 400 dead and wounded aboard. After Trafalgar, the captured ship entered British service, briefly renamed HMS Berwick before becoming HMS San Juan. In a remarkable tribute to Chiruka's bravery, the cabin he once occupied bore a brass plaque with his name, and anyone entering was required to remove their hat in respect. From 1805 to 1808, she served as a base ship in Gibraltar. Later, she was recommissioned as a prison ship and then as the flagship for a flotilla of gunboats operating from the rock. In a poignant turn, the ship was returned to Spain in 1809 as a goodwill gesture during the Peninsula War against Napoleon. She proudly resumed her original name, San Juan Nepomuceno, and served for several more years. In 1816, she was struck from the Naval Register and broken up in Cadiz due to extreme agent deterioration. San Juan Nepomuceno is fascinating as a living witness and a symbol of an entire era. Its story is one of naval valor, the tragic death of its commander, the respect shown by its enemies, and an extraordinary service life that spanned nearly seven decades. It journeyed from being a formidable ship of the line to serving as a floating prison, endured captivity and returned to duty, ultimately becoming a true icon of the Spanish Navy. Thanks for watching.